Um, hello, hello, guys. And today we are going to see how to build a commodity trading empire in 2024 and beyond. So let's dive in. If you want to build something that will last, like an empire, a really, 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 really big comp company or anything, it's going to take time. So, and uh, most probably, if you want to build something huge, it's going to take 25 years plus, uh, like a quarter uh, of a century. So, um, and it's my deep, how can I say, it's my deep, deep conviction that the best industry to be in the next 25 years is the commodity industry. And to have those type of um, and to have this type of conviction, uh, you need to have like a very very good conviction about your industry, about what you are doing, because if you want to work on something for twenty five years plus, you need to have some type of conviction, because otherwise, if you have like a couple of bad years, you you can be like doubt yourself, like is it what what the fuck am I doing? Is it like a, a, a am I am I losing my time here and so on? So this is why you need to have like a conviction. That if to build, uh, to build, uh, to work on something for a very, very long time, and it's my conviction that right now it's prime time for uh, the commodity industry. So what we are going to see is I'm going to discuss about four trends that um, I'm going to that actually the commodity industry is going to ride for the next uh, twenty years, and uh, those four those four trends are my conviction on how I'm building my. Empire. Empire is a bit a, a, a grandiose word, <laughs> or at least what I'm building. So uh, stick to the end. After the first round, I will explain uh, how I'm building it and how I'm thinking about building it. And uh, yeah, we can have a discussion about it. So the four trends. The first one is the uh, ESG revenge. So ESG stands for um, environmental, societal, and governance. And this is um, something that has been pushed for the, like, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years, especially by the big uh, money manager, um, like BlackRock, I think is one of the, Larry Finch at BlackRock is one of the first uh, guy that uh, created ESG fund. And basically, um, the ESG crowd hate everything which is related to commodity because it's polluting and so on. So uh, because of that, uh, the next, the last, 15 years, we've seen an underinvestment in a lot of industries, and most of them are commodity related. So, in the fertilizer industry, we've seen an underinvestment. In the smelting industry, we've seen an underinvestment. And, and also, smelting, I don't think there is all the smelters already left uh, Europe. So, uh, Europe is completely uh, destroyed right now in terms of industrial uh, heavy industry. Um, mining, obviously. If you love nature, you don't want people to mine, which is a bit um, which is a bit an issue because if you want everything electric, we need a lot of metals. Uh, refinery, the same for fuel, uh, crude oil. I am to 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 transform crude oil into a product that you can use. You need refinery. I think in the US they haven't built a refinery for the last fifty years. Uh, all the new refinery has been built in uh, in Asia mostly. Of course, for side fuel, no uh, no company is looking for new um, new uh, new new uh, new new deposit of a side fuel. Uh, no one wants to fund uh, the billion of dollars that is required to put a new a new uh, well, a new huge wells on the online. So, and of course, the chemical industry um, the uh, is been lacking. I think. Uh, now with the Russian uh, Ukraine war, Europe um, BAS, B A S F, one one of the largest uh, chemical companies in the world uh, with uh, Dow, uh, I think just had to sh to shut their uh, chemical factory in uh, in Germany, which is which was one of the biggest in the world. So um, all of those industry have been suffering because of the lack of investment, mostly due to a bad ESG scoring. So what I see for the next. Uh, 10 years and so on, 15 years, is going to be like a revenge of the ESG. Is it all those industries that have been hit by a lack of capital are now going to, um, uh, we are going to see like a, a lot of volatility in all those industries because of just the lack of, um, of just pure investment in the, in the infrastructure and in the supply. So 
this is going to create a lot of volatility. And as you know, volatility is good for commodity traders. Then the second trend, so energy transition. So we are still, uh, I think the world is moving for, to, forward with the energy transition. And I think people are just getting a little bit wrong how it's going to go. So um, this is my belief that we are going to go, move from fossil fuel to biofuel. So right now, there's already a lot of bi biofuel, I mean, ethanol and so on. There's a lot of blend that uh, you can use your fuel with, your, with, with ethanol and so on. It, it's quite easy, you know, to convert a fuel, um, a fuel engine to a biofuel engine. So we have this technology, this technology has been working. So it's going to be way more easier to, to change the infrastructure from fossil fuel to biofuel rather than creating a completely new infrastructure to um, to be able to um, to take synthetic fuel and of course synthetic fuel such as um, hydrogen is definitely the cleanest but we are very very far away uh, from having the infrastructure and just the production capacity to to create uh, hydrogen and also hydrogen is um, just like a, it's like a battery hydrogen actually because you need to produce the hydrogen so. Uh, you can produce it with coal, actually, if you want to. Um, and then once you have the hydrogen, you need to move it and then to uh, to rechange it, to to make it, uh, to transform it into electricity. So uh, this synthetic fuel is maybe uh, cleaner, for sure. There is no CO2, but we are very, very far from having anything uh, remotely. Um, uh, re I, I mean... The, the amount of billions of dollars that uh, we would need, the world would need to switch to something fuel is just uh, completely un uh, unthinkable. So I don't think we are going to be there uh, before the next, I don't know, 50 years, 100 years, I don't know. So we are very, very far from that world. So my best guess is uh, there's going to be an edge and government are going to push more for biofuel. This is also why I'm, I jumped last year in the biomass business, because if you have coal, biomass, Obviously, it's not uh, as clean as any synthetic fuel, but it's still better than, than coal. And the idea to think about it is like fossil fuel is like you look into the fucking dirt to find fuel, you burn it, the CO2 in the, is in the air. Biofuel is something grow, absorbing the CO2, you burn it, so at least it's CO2 neutral, even though it's discutable, and synthetic fuel, it's supposed to be clean. So that's the energy transition. It's also going to be a massive uh, wave. Uh, that is going to impact us for, uh, I think, the rest of our life. Now, the third uh, trend is maybe uh, the most uh, concerning is we are moving into a multipolar world. So I think the last uh, few weeks, um, we are going to see the event of what, what is going, uh, what, what is the feeling of a multipolar world? So in the last um, world, let's say i think the world after the second world war basically the us just shaped the world with uh, uh, all the uh, um, international organizations such as the world trade organization united nations world bank imf um the us dollar as a uh, uh, back as a reserve currency nato and so on so this is the structure of the world uh, that uh, we um uh, our parent depending on uh, how old you are that that our parent has seen but now we are moving into a multipolar world. And this multipolar world also means way more volatility, way more uh, tariff, way more uh, trade wars, and way more uh, uncertainty. So again, we are going to see a lot, a lot of volatility because um, the counterparty risk, the geopolitical risk is something that creates massive movement in any type of market. So uh, I truly don't know what this new multipolar world is going to look like. We have seen uh, the, the IMF bank of the BRIC, the new development bank. They put at the head of the new development bank, uh, Dilma Rousseff, which is, uh, she's uh, the, with the former um, Brazilian president. I think she did nothing as a Brazilian president. My wife is from Brazil, I know quite well Brazil. So this is maybe the worst politician ever that they put at the head of that. So obviously the new development bank did also nothing for the last five, ten to seven years. Um, they are speaking about a BRIC currency. So just a little reminder, guys. So BRICS stand for Brazilian, uh, Brazil, Russian, India, China, and South Africa. Now you take those five currency and you compare it to uh, the US dollar for the last 25 years. All those currencies goes to the the fucking uh, toilet, you know. So I think real 
I think the value of the real uh, uh, must be divided by like, I don't know, 20 compared to the US dollar, except for South African run. I mean, those currencies are joke. Um, so if you take a pile of shit and you make it a big shit, is it a better currency? I don't know. Doesn't seem that I like. So maybe it's going to be backed by something, but I, I don't really think that we are going to see this. Also, have you tried to have like Brazilian, a Russian, an Indian, a Chinese, and a South African agree or something? It's not going to work. Um, then uh, bilateral. So what we are going to see more, I guess, is bilateral agreement, which is uh, what uh, China is doing right now. Russia is also doing it. Is basically uh, okay. I'm going to sell. Uh, Russia is going to sell to to Chinese uh, in yuan. Uh, Russia is going to sell to ruble, to Brazilian, and so on. So there's going to be way more uh, bilateral agreement and uh, currencies exchange like this. But again, it creates massive friction because uh, it's way easier to use the US dollar. So that's for the third trend. Now the trend number four. So this one is not about geopolitics or commodity. It's more about the way the the new uh, the way to, to to build a business today. So. Those two people, um, maybe you don't know that girl. She's uh, Kelly Jenner, one of the Kardashian girls, and she was the youngest billionaire. And this guy is Mr. Beast. So if you're on YouTube, you've probably uh, seen it. So I think he, he's worth like 1.5 billion. He's 23 or something like this. And um, he has one of the fastest growing chocolate company uh, uh, in the world. Uh, and I think he's going to beat Hershey's and all the legacy brand quite fast in terms of volume of sales. So this is completely unheard of. So uh, what I want just to uh, show you with those two examples, and we have other examples like this. Uh, Elon Musk, I think he didn't really put like any marketing behind Tesla. His Twitter account was the main uh, driver. And the same in the old days with, uh, with Rich, Sir Richard Branson and Virgin, uh, the Virgin Empire, uh, I think the way that they structure their brand is that you can basically go to via the Virgin HQ, say that you want to do, I don't know, Virgin whatever, and then he's going to um, lend you, you, you are going to buy, to, to buy for the brand. So um, this is the strength of the brand. So I think what we are going to see more is brand, new company are going to be uh, backed by personal brand. So what does it mean? I, those examples that we have seen are examples for B2B, B2C, business to consumer. But we are going to see more and more B2B uh, personal brands. And those brands are way more niche because obviously if you speak about, I don't know, uh, cement or construction, whatever, you are less well known by, uh, by everyone, but still. So, and I think the B2B brands uh, are taking off right now, even though they are obviously less known than someone like Peter, Mr. Beast, but it's the new way of building business. And this is my deep, 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 uh, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure about that. And this is what I'm trying to create in the commodity industry. Because in front of me, I have a big corporation that just sealed their, uh, their employee. Their employee are not allowed, they are not allowed to talk on about, about what they do. So if you go, have, have you ever seen someone from Vital doing any interview? Vital, biggest uh, company, um, in terms of revenue, it should be one of the top five uh, biggest company in the world. Um, have you ever uh, heard one of, no, no, they don't speak. So I think there is like a blue ocean for someone uh, with a strong personal brand to do something uh, in this industry. Especially the, the people, uh, the, I mean, Traffic is a good example. They are trying to put, uh, to, to do more, uh, to do more uh, PR. And you can look at Anna here. She's a global head of carbon. Obviously, she's uh, very pretty. She must be also very clever. And uh, Trafigura is doing this big push with their new rebranding. So she's, they look like now more fucking Google than an uh, oil trader. Uh, and, uh, but, but there's some, uh, some problem by doing that. If they are always going to be attacked by the fact that I spoke the other day with a, a, a coal trader in, um, in Indonesia. And he told me that Trafigura I think they ship 40 ship of coal per month from Indonesia to diverse 40, 40 times uh, 50,000 uh, metric ton uh, of coal. I mean, you can imagine the volume of coal that they trade and it must be a very profitable book. So it's very difficult for companies like this um, to be like the, I mean, to represent, uh, I don't know, uh, a new opportunity, whatever carbon sheet they do. Uh, there's, there's always going to be these uh, these uh, these uh, these uh, deep 
um, uh, this, this deep problem is their PR, is the fact that they, in one way they are going to push for electricity and so on, but in, the, in, the, in another way they're making a lot of money with all those uh, fossil fuel commodity. So I think, again, there is like a, 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 a blue ocean for me and for other people actually, uh, to speak more about this industry and to, um, to, to, to bring it on his shoulder. And this is why uh, I, I put this slide. I don't know if you know that guy. Uh, uh, this is uh, Luffy from uh, the, the manga called One Piece. This manga um, now is, I think, the, um, the comics that has been, the, 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 the books that has been sold even more than, uh, than Harry Potter. So uh, it's an uh, extremely uh, well-known manga. And if you read this manga, this uh, character is basically the uh, god of light. And he is there to uh, break down the, the world government, which is represented by the shadow. So this is a little bit the idea that I have in my mind. that like I can be extremely transparent about what I do. And then it will help me to uh, propel, uh, to get more traction. Obviously, I'm only at the very beginning of my journey, but that's pretty much the activity. So by uh explaining and building in public what i'm doing my idea is that i can build trot faster with a different counterparty and that is the case i have seen it i have a better pool of talent because people see how uh, who i am and so on and uh so it attracts the right type of people and opportunity comes to my comes to my way instead of hunting for opportunities so it's very 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 powerful but you could get burned and this happened like uh, uh, extremely recently uh, we had some issue at uh, one of my companies, Grand Bar Energy. Uh, it's been a very, very difficult month. Uh, I had to, to step in and we had to solve a lot. Of, it's like five problems that if we would have taken them separately, no problem. No, no I mean, oh, all would be okay. But the fact that we had those five problems at the same time, it completely wrecked the company. And so uh, we were late on a few payments because we had our banks blocked us and so on. I will do a video about what happened uh, once everything is solved. But then, And then one supplier was like... Um, very angry, of course, because we were late, and they started to uh, to ping me and uh, comment shit on my social media account. And I was like, "Fuck, man!" That's, I mean, <laughs> that's uh, I understand them. Actually. I understand them. Um, uh, so yeah, so this is one of the issue to be uh, on the forefront. But I still think that he has more um, advantage than disadvantage. So now that I, I've given you my four most important trend for the next uh, twenty five years. I'm going to use and surf those trends to, uh, to, to make a, an empire. So let's see the plan. So the empire building flywheel. So the idea is to start with the, uh, the personal brand. So I do stuff on YouTube and LinkedIn. Then I push every, everyone to Sh Saga, she is a shipping and commodity uh, upper, uh, academy. Then out of there, I can see the talent who uh, mean it, who are really good and so on. So some talent, I cannot really do something with them right now because it's too early and so on. So uh, I push them to a commodity trading company or to I help them to get inside a commodity trading company. And, you know, they have become like friends of, of me and the Shipping and Community Academy. So if we have like deals or something that we can do with one of my company, they still know me, they still like me. So it's easier for us to do deals together. Then from the Shipping and Community Academy, I also find extremely talented people where we can start something together or where I can like just hire to, uh, in one of my company. So it's very a very good uh, thing for me. Then when I do stuff in one of my company, it, uh, I can speak uh, about it on, uh, on my social media, which makes me grow because, uh, I mean, you, can, you cannot really attack me and say, oh, man, you're a fucking douchebag, you're a liar, blah, blah, blah. Because everything that I say, I, I'm doing it or I've done it. So, I mean, this... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have the, I have the proof. So I, I don't really care. Uh, and also my personal brand help those company. Uh, of there's like few secret project or companies that I, I don't speak in public because it's too early right now. But that's uh, that's pretty much it. And then the more I do that, the more my personal brand grow. The more the shipping and commodity can grow. The more people I can help to get into inside commodity trading company, the bigger it grows and so on and so on. So this is the idea of the uh, of the flywheel. This is what I'm trying to, to build. And uh, every year I'm, um, uh, that I'm doing it, hopefully well, then it will grow, uh, the, the whole thing should grow together. The thing is, is that it's quite difficult actually to, to build something as a personal brand and so on. You, you saw this guy on, uh, on the internet and so on. 
I mean, the, <laughs> it, it's not easy, man. <laughs> so I'm still, I'm still trying to get uh, YouTube, um, LinkedIn. I think uh, it's uh, doing well, but still, the other platform. I don't know. It takes a lot of time. I should have people that uh, do that for me, or I don't know. But it's uh, still something that I, I'm not. I haven't really cracked. But I know it's very, very, very powerful, um, and so on. So this is the Opaya. But the Opaya building flywheel that I'm creating. This is what I'm working on. Uh, and yeah, so then the next step it will be when in three to five years, when those companies are big enough, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my shares in all those companies and um, holding company. And then the, uh, the idea will be that this holding company will be able to get cheaper credit if we agglomerate all of those guys. And then uh, get, get this, this, give this credit back to the portfolio company. So this is the long-term uh, idea. I'm not really sure how this will play out because the thing is to have a holding company that really can help all the company here. I need to have like uh, clever people that I need to pay a lot to uh, to make it work, you know, especially if you deal with a bank and so on, if with a private uh, family office and so on. You, you cannot really have like kids, you know, to discuss with those people. You need to have senior people. It costs a lot of money. So that's mean that those companies must make enough money for uh, the just to cover the cost of the structuring of the holding company and the three, five, four people, I don't know, that uh, are going to, to work in this uh, holding company that I guess going to cost, I don't know, half a million a year or something like this. So, I don't know, we, I'm, I'm not there, but that's basically the, the idea done the night. And if this doesn't work, I still have a bunch of companies that make money. It's not that bad. So, here is my plan. Now, if uh, anyone uh, wants to know what I'm doing, I can just uh, put that, <laughs> I can just uh, send a link to, uh, to this video and you'll know everything. <laughs> Nothing to hide. Um, yeah, that's it. So, guys, if you have like any question, I'm here to answer. Up. So, Eric. So you watched uh, you watched um, One Piece on uh, Netflix. That was the live action. Actually, I, I watched the two first episodes. It's not that bad for a live action. Usually, when they take anime and they make a anime and they make a uh, something real, it's it's shit. But uh, but that one was not that bad. So it's a very interesting. Yeah. Up, let me. So, guys, what did you think? Uh, what do you think about the plan? Uh, do you think it's a good idea, bad idea? Uh, or if you want to speak about any, anything else, I'm here. Uh, quick shameless plug. So, and uh, for all of you guys that want to break into commodity trading, uh, of course, the first link in the description below should be the Shipping and Commodity Academy. Land on the first link, they don't know the brochure, and you'll be on the mailing list. Uh, when you'll know uh, what uh, is happening. So I'm going to stay here five minutes, and if there is no question, then uh, for me it's going. <laughs> then if there's no question, there's no question. <laughs> but we are 28 on the on the stream. That's uh, that's good. It's getting better. Um, do you think AI will disrupt your market segment in the next 10 years? No. Okay, so uh, one thing, um, um, I, I'm redoing the, um, um, the the sales page for the Shipping Community Academy Operator Certificate. And one thing that I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm saying is like, community training is extremely AI resistant for a few different reasons. The first one is that a community training is based on relationships. So in a world where Everyone sell at the market price and everyone gives the same payment term because at the end of the day, everyone has the same risk uh, tolerance. Then what is going to make you choose from one seller, one counterparty to another is going to be the relationship that you have with them. And this AI won't be able to do it. The other thing is that like, uh, AI will probably play a role in the term of operations. So if you have like 100 trucks uh, a, a week, a day, uh, that load, AI will be like, uh, I think will be great to just... Uh, uh, streamline all of that, that for sure in terms of operation, but it's going to be marginal. So, okay, so the, the, the company is going to be easier, uh, it's going to be easier to run with AI, but in terms of really getting market share, speaking with people, creating the relationship, 
Yeah, I won't walk in. And also in international trade, man, the laws change uh, every day. And on the law, the application of the law and how the law uh, have, is seen by the people that ap uh, apply, uh, that follow the law. Uh, yeah, I won't. <laughs> no, it's not, not now. Love your plan. My question is, how did you learn what you know about the, this business? Would you recommend the community uh, university course from Uniger or Unidusian in Switzerland? Okay, so uh, two questions. Love your plan. My question is, how did you learn what you know about this business? Yeah, I mean, I've been doing this for 15 years. And uh, the thing is, I've started the I've started the Shipping Community Academy with a blog um, seven years ago, uh, something like this. So uh, I thought about the commodity industry for, for a very, very long time. Um, and I would, you know, try to make frameworks to understand what is going on. And uh, this is why I, I think I, I got a, a clear view, you know, because all the my... Uh, my, all the other people that work in the industry, you know, they just they don't think about the 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 big pictures of the industry. Just they just, they, they just work. You know? <laughs> so, um, but when you want, when you need to take a step back and you need to think about it to write something or to make a video uh, about something new and something interesting, then you need to think about uh, uh, those type of trends. So, um, uh, this is why. Uh, would you recommend the community university course? Uh, I don't know the university course uh, from uh, Lucerne. Uh, uh, the one from Geneva, I think the one from Geneva is good because you work and then the courses are only for on the Friday and Saturday. If that is still the case, yeah, it's good. If this is like a uni and you need to put your eyes on a chair to have like someone with a below average IQ um, to um, give you a course, then it's fucking useless. Would you register your company uh, within the EU? It depends. Uh, it depends. It depend. uh, again, so I speak about that um, in one of the courses of the uh, bootcamp, um, where to register your company. But it, it really depends. Uh, I would say that uh, it's always easier to have your, uh, your company registered where you you deal, where you where you are. But man, there's like so many. Uh, give me like more details about what you want to do, and I'll tell you. Are you considering to be more vertically integrated, mining, mining, uh, storage, processing, including, or are you just focused more on the, your strengths? What other community you think could work? Uh, so are you considering to be more vertically integrated, mining, storage, processing, including? Um, okay. Uh, man, so to be vertically integrated, you need to have a lot of money to buy assets. <laughs> that, that, that's not, but I, you know, I'm talking millions. So um, I think storage are great. I like, uh, uh, like processing. Um, Maybe small mines, yeah, why not? But it again, it's a new. I have a chrome mine, man. It's a, it's a fucking pain in the ass. And so it's again, it's a new, it's a new, like it's a new industry. I mean, you need you need to learn about it. So it's it's tough. It's tough to be vertically integrated. And look at um, a trophy figure. I mean, they are losing hundred million in their mine in, uh, in DRC. So it's difficult. Um, but then I don't know what is the best. I don't know. I, I like storage. I like uh, processing for sure because it helps in trading. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is what I would say. Then having reproducing really unit could be a good idea. Maybe so long. I, I don't know. So you see, I, I don't know if there is one. Of course, when the price skyrocket, skyrocket, you want to be a, a, a producer. But uh, okay. And are you just going to focus more on your strength? What other commodity you think could work? I think it. it I mean, could work again. You need to give more info. Awesome. Thanks for the answer. Thanks, but man, you—if it's you that worked with uh, with Roger, and now you you change, right? How what? Uh, how is the best way to start international trading? How should I start? I'm in Ethiopia, East Africa. Uh, what you should do first, of course, is to take my course. But then uh, I know it's uh, pricey. Maybe if you're in Ethiopia, do not have the means. So the first thing that you need to do is to find a way to make money, man. I have a job because <laughs> honestly, you can't start without money. Um, I'm sorry to, or you need to have a partner that has money, but anyway, you need to find some, cap some pool of capital. And if I were in Ethiopia, what I would do is I would try to um, find an industry, find uh, try a new network, whatever, to find someone that have a, a factory and that need a uh, raw material commodity for their factory. Don't do as everyone else wants to do, is try to export stuff out of Ethiopia. There's already... A lot of people are doing that. They, are, they know what they are doing. And if you don't have a lot of money on the side, man, it's going to be tough. 
Kinostat Energy without you start an energy trading business without uh, working for an energy trading firm? Yes, of course you start. There's, uh, uh, no, um, uh, there's no law against it, uh, but uh, if you have like a 50 million on to, to put, yeah, why not? You can start it. Otherwise, I don't know. Papa et ta maman t'embrasse. Merci, papa. Merci, maman. Si, the family is on the, on the stream. Uh, which is the main strength you are focusing to get differentiated from big community trading company? Oh, no, do, do. Okay, so the thing is, what I'm going to do, uh, we are not going to, um, I, I'm not going, uh, none of those business, uh, we are facing a huge community trading firm. The problem is that people, um, the, uh, the last video, I think, or the second last video that I did uh, uh, on my YouTube channel, I don't remember which one is it, uh, but uh, I discuss where you can find niche market. And so we, I'm focusing on finding those niche market. So those, those are the market where there is no, not a huge trading company in front of me because those guys, they have infinite money uh, and they will uh, drive uh, your margin down uh, and then you cannot really compete. You cannot have like a good margin that you, uh, you cannot hire people. Then this is shit. So I only uh, intend to, um, to deal in niche market, but a niche market could be like a huge commodity, like I don't know, copper, fuel oil or whatever. But in a niche geography where the, uh, the big guys are not there because it's a fucking pain in the ass to, to deal in that country or it's too complicated, or it's just too small. I mean, to run a, 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 you know, the desk there, they did to at least 5 million profit. Otherwise, it's a, it's a shitty desk. So, um, yes, I'm only focusing on a niche market. And of course, um, down, the, down the line, if we get big enough, then we can maybe try to uh, find some flows where there is most competition. But again, uh, it's not the the priority. Yeah, that's you. Starting new job on first of all. Biopolymer, recycler polymer, veggie polymer. Man, this is good. Good for you, man. Good for you. Do supply to, uh, yes, yes, yes. We do sell to China. I mean, and uh, this is also why I moved to uh, Southeast Asia to be closer to China. Uh, and yes, we supply to China. Hey, Damien, I want to join a community during Glencore Graduate, but all those companies have such a bad reputation. I have the feeling that I would just have always to justify myself. Yeah, man, Jude. So first of all, if you want to um, uh, to break into, uh, we have a bunch of people that got uh, into Glencore and they did the shipping committee operator certificate so think about it and uh about the second part of the question is of course of course they have bad fucking reputation but the, the, the thing is like um you have to justify yourself to toward who toward, toward you you uh, you weak friend i mean it's, uh, honestly and it's, so uh, if you need to justify yourself uh <laughs> with yourself <laughs> man why do you care what people think about you? Wait. Uh, v is starting as carpenter with little capital a good idea? Copper especially? No, it's not a good idea, man. <laughs> so, but uh, no, okay, okay. I, I think copper, uh, um, okay. Scrap metal is very interesting. There's a lot of small payer, a lot of little co co company that collect. There's a, a lot of things to do with the scrap. But if you tell me that, oh, I want to do copper and I have a 10K, uh, what? <laughs> I mean, what do you want to do, man? One, one, one ton of copper is like 8,000 8, 8, 8, uh, so I, I don't know, man. What, what do you think? If you want to do ton by ton, yeah, why not? But, but... Yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I got your question. But my question to you is, my dude, why do you need to justify yourself toward your friends, family, and so on? Fuck them. <laughs> no, but seriously, man. And if you think so much about what they think about you, man, maybe there's something wrong with you. I know what I mean. Uh, and I, I don't want to, to be, to be uh, I'm sorry, but my, my also could be a bit rude. But I'm just saying, think, think that you shouldn't live your life to... Uh, uh, yeah, you should not live your life justifying yourself with other people. I mean, it's your life, man. It's not there. Fuck them. 
Um, hello, Damien. Have you been away? Uh, I've been away for a while. Life's, life's tough. Glad to know you are still rocking as well. Thanks, thanks, man. What is the difference between international trade export? Yeah, I mean, it's the same. It's the same. Usually, uh, import export business is more like when you, we talk about finished product. That's pretty much it. But at the end of the day, this is import export business. Yeah. Um, the problem with finished product is like, um, if you missed, you know, whatever things you, you buy a chair and no one wants that, that chair because they are so ugly or whatever, then you'll face a, a huge loss. You know, you cannot liquidate the thing. The idea with commodity raw materials is like you can always liquidate it if you decrease the price um, enough. Well, I, yeah, Gwangju. I, I mean, I have a good friend that uh, I'm, I already have a good partner in Gwangju. So, and but if you want me to collaborate, I only collaborate now with people from the Shipping and Commodity Academy. Again, man, I have so much inbound, you know, that uh, <laughs> I need to be a bit. Yeah. Can you elucidate the part of the on offshore bank? Again, I spoke about that in uh, the, um, the boot camp, uh, but uh, yeah, you don't really need an offshore bank unless your country is a shitty country, and then of course you need an offshore bank. But it's um, the problem is that, okay. Let's say you now you need to open a company in Dubai, so you can get banking in Dubai. Um, then you know these banks they are not going to be extremely helpful to you, unless you your uh, of onshore bank is shit. For instance, right now at Gomba Energy, well, we have a big problem with one of our bank that is withholding our money for no reason, and it's very very difficult to understand what they want. Um, because it's just a, a shit bank, <laughs> so, so maybe we should go offshore. But but if your question is, do you do I need uh, an offshore bank? No, not really, unless your country has like some rule about uh, how you can move the currency around. This is very interesting. I'm based in Zimbabwe, there's a lot of uh, minerals that are being overlooked. It's a pain learning a lot from your video, yeah, man, cool. But in Zimbabwe, um, uh, we are. But we are, I think well, there's a lot of chrome in Zimbabwe, right? Damien, I'm a broker trader of ESG uh, commodities, copper, cobalt, soft, get finance, and say to Chinese, what else can I do to add more value? The problem, man, is like um, you're a broker, and I, I I understand that you are a broker because you don't have the means to uh, have. have to um, to do a full cargo of copper of cobalt, but um, uh, have you have you made money? I mean, have you already broke a deal or not? It can be leverage one or copper can push for Leverage by who? I mean. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I think, the okay, so uh, about the future of copper, yeah, copper is going to be in high demand, copper price is going to go uh, through the roof. I just wonder, how can you leverage this? Are you speaking about future market? Then, okay, but who is going to lend you more money and just, um, if you already have a plan, good, man. Uh, uh, honestly, but uh, tax, uh, to answer sharp for in bank account, tax evasion. I don't know if Charles, this is the answer, honestly. But uh, hey, I mean, when you join a commodity firm, does it have to happen that you never become a trader and stay in the back office? I don't want to stay in the back office with a lottery. Uh, yeah, of course. It, uh, most of the people, this is what happened to most of the people. When I was in the uh, Totsa Total Oil Trading, I can tell you that uh, there were like a desk of 30 operators, and most of them wanted to become trader. And only one, two a year uh, moved to trading, trader. So yeah, of course. Um, yeah, but man, this is life, and you just need to be better. Uh, and I can tell you that right now, being better is extremely easy because this new generation, I guess, you are a part of them. I don't know how, what happened to you guys, but you are so fucking weak, man. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what, what is going on. Is it in the fucking water or what? Or what shit, man? But uh, <laughs> you are so weak, uh, so it's uh, quite easy to be better, but yeah. You think uh, that private equity will be more interesting in energy in the community? I don't know. 
I don't know. I I I really don't know <laughs> what is going on. Uh, but where uh, there are there are already a lot of money in um, in renewables. The thing is, renewable doesn't work. Uh, I mean, doesn't work. Depends how. Uh, but uh, but yeah, private equity. They there are a lot of funds that uh, finance those. So there is no lack of money in this. In the point of view of the seller, are there any LC scam to be? <laughs> okay, seller LC scam. Yeah, there is a lot of LC scam. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, there is a lot of LC scam. Um, uh, okay, so so you sell. Um, so that means that uh, your buyer is going to open a LC. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, one of the um, I, I don't know, man. There's like so many scams. But I, I don't, ask me like a, a a good question. I mean, uh, um, a question with more details, and then I can give you like an example. Which study to, to do university to work in community? There is no like a study. I, mean, uh, I think it's better to be like um, it's better to do something like engineering or something like this, like ge geologist, um, chemicals or shit like this. If you want to work in the in um, in oil and so on. You don't need definitely don't need a business degree. Any recommended commodity trade will provide trading in China? Mm. Uh, I don't understand the question. If you want training, you can follow mine. <laughs> um, becoming a trader is like wanting to become pro. Yes, yeah, he's right. I do have a podcast, so no, I don't. But uh, I, uh, inside the shipping and commodity operation certificate, um, there is like now I have like six or seven interviews that I do with a business owner or commodity trader, and those are private interview only for the people that uh, are um, that follow the course. And the the reason is that it's very, 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 very difficult to have anyone speaking about what they do, um, even in a small com community like uh, the one that we have. In the shipping commodity academy, it's very difficult. So I think I only have like two or three interviews on the YouTube channel, uh, and that's it. Yeah, people don't want to speak. This is uh, atrocious. Yeah, at Zim, but now it's very difficult to get like export license in Zim. I mean, it takes a lot of time and so on. But uh, yeah, uh, do you have any experience in trading carbon credit? Uh, yeah, actually, not really in trading carbon credit, but in my past job. Um, we looked at uh, financing uh, voluntary carbon credit. So, um, and when you finance it, I mean, you take them uh, as a collateral to the finance. Uh, I mean, you need to know as well uh, as a trader what is going on. So, I, I, I cannot say that I have a trading experience, but I, I, differ, I definitely have like a good knowledge of the space. Uh, but how can I different myself compared to other at the desk? I'm going to tell you what do you think are the most important traits that you need to get? Man, uh, okay, so I have a YouTube video about that. One. Three, three hacks I think to go to, to or something like this. I don't remember what I did, said in the, the video, but I think I think I think I said uh, uh, you basically need to be a friend with them because this is how promotion are made inside a big uh, corporation. It's uh, you need to be one of the best, and also you need to be friend with the people that you are going to work with. Because if there is like a trading desk with four guys and they don't like you, even if you're the best ops guys or whatever guys, you will not get the promotion. Yeah. Yeah, there is also a lot of politics. Man. So, but the worst company was really a uh, total, but the level of. Uh, uh, <laughs> of internal politics was through the roof, but it was a long time ago. Now I have a new friend who told me it's better. Uh, but yeah, there's a man. You need to uh, to, to suck the right dick and then uh, to uh, to know when you shut up. What should I do in the first step uh, to find communities buyer in China? Man, this is the country of community buyers. Man, I don't know what to tell you. Man. <laughs> Yeah, but they probably okay. But if you live in China, you know it better than I. But they're probably not really interested to buy from you. They just want to see your one thing with a uh, with the Chinese buyer. Most of the time, they, are, they they will not buy from you. They will just ask for the price, ask, ask for everything, just to make a comparison with what they already have, and then they are going to work with the guy that they know. So it's going to take a lot of time to uh, to get like a new Chinese buyer. 
but if you're willing to put the time and the effort, it worth it because the volume are huge. Yeah, I, I think it's the same in all the bigger uh, com company. How do you network? Do you prefer to make a uh, network? <laughs> yes, yes, of course, this is the only, okay. Um, about networking, yes, you can ping people on LinkedIn and, and so on, for sure. Use it, you, you have this uh, this new tool. But where you are going to network is uh, in conferences, in event, uh, and so on. For the everything that, for everyone that were working in the food stuff, there was like one big one in uh, Germany called Anuga. Uh, uh, all the guys that are important goes there to, because it's easy, you know, when you go to this big event, you can see all your suppliers, all your clients in one place. So this is why people go there. Um, for instance, my associate, uh, Paul went to Sweden last uh, week, uh, for like a biomass conference. Uh, yeah, you need to go to, to those events. This is why you are going to see the real player, not the one that are on LinkedIn and ask for you for LOI or, <laughs> or proof of fund or <laughs> shit like this. So, um, yeah, you need to go to conferences, but of course it costs money to go there. Those conferences are P2B conferences. Usually they are quite expensive. So, um, yeah, conferences, event. This is why you are going to network with the real people that really make deals. I'm currently doing an internship in an investment banking and people are something rude. I don't like it. It's a, it's a level of rudeness and negotiating people similar in commodity trading. So you know what, football, man, I'm going to, to be extremely frank with you. So uh, I think trading is even worse than that. You know, it's even worse. People treat other people like shit, but uh, not sheep, shit, you know? And the fact that you said that, oh, it's maybe a, a, a bad reputation and what people will think of me, Maybe you are not cut to it, man. Uh, seriously, uh, just by you, like two sentence, two uh, two questions. Maybe you're just too soft, man. Of course, they are rude. Of course, they are extremely egotistical. Because a sign of someone that could be a very good trader is that he thinks extremely high of, me, of himself. So, if you have a very high level of confidence, you are probably going to make a good trader if you can. Uh, if your ego is not through the roof, so that's true. So yeah. Uh, man, and uh, I can tell you stories, man. I mean, when I was, uh, uh, I worked in a uh, few companies, people were crying at work. Fucking crying. I'm laughing now, but it's fucking horrible. But this is, uh, it's like this, man. <laughs> but can I say, there is a lot of money, there is a lot of pressure. There is a lot of pressure, and you need to, to take decision. Uh, you don't have a lot of time. You make mistakes, people are losing a lot of money. Uh, and, and you know, there was stuff like, because when people are like crying, like, um, I mean, the desk, there was maybe like, I don't know, 80 people, you know, and then everyone like just shut the fuck up and was like focused on the screen. And then like, if you were like next to the people crying, you know, usually they say, oh, it's only a job. <laughs> it's terrible, terrible. <laughs> oh my God. Um, uh, do you have some experience knowledge about specialties? Specialties. Is there any opportunities? What do you mean by specialties? Specialties coffee? Try working in the maritime industry, even worse, yeah. Yeah, maritime industry, uh, uh, treat people like shit. Yeah, man. Come here. Is it interesting to listen to news as trading on chart? Yes. I, man, you need to be more precise. Okay, and as a partner, you have to be tough enough and sharp as a fuck to training. You take it one or two steps above it. Yep. Yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much. I mean, I don't know at Exxon, um, as an operator, do you work also Saturday and Sunday? Or do you have people that take the shifts? Because, you know, a lot of people said, you man, I can't be a, an operator anymore. I have vessel during the weekend and so on. I have a family. I can't stand you. So that's... Uh, that's the truth. But I mean, if you are young, it's okay. Then it's when you have a family and so on. Maybe you sometimes want to check out of the work. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but of course, man. I mean, how much is it, is it a vessel a day? Yeah, of course. Not. Yeah, of course. I mean, the reality is like the um, the the price of the, of, of the transport is like I don't know twenty five k a day. So if we can say, oh no, guys, I was chilling at the beach. I'm sorry, I didn't take the phone. Man. So yeah. Even for barging, I, even for barging stuff. But I thought that the barge was like, uh, yeah, I guess it depends on the port. So, 
Yeah, man, it's, <laughs> it's a tough industry, but I mean, maybe people are a bit uh, mazo, I don't know, but. <laughs> okay, guys, almost one hour. I see uh, if you have like any other question, I'm still going to hang out here for like 10 minutes. Uh, and uh, and otherwise, I'm going to call it today. Uh, this is the first time that I do one in a uh, Saturday uh, during the uh, afternoon European. But I see we have like 31 people, so I mean this is great. I disagree with you. We also know the value of a broker in our business. A firm can provide value by energy in quality. Uh, yes, I have indeed. I'm good. So, man, good for you, man. Good for you. But I still, uh, I mean. I still believe what I believe in. Um, I think, why? Okay. Honestly, you are doing uh, so. You can provide value by only logistic, consultancy, and quality control. So then, why aren't you trading it? Seriously, man. So, what I would do if I were you, I would try to find someone to help you with the capital and do small deal. Uh, yeah, like from mine to warehouse or something like this. A trade. You are going to get better margin because at the end of the day, man, you know, people will try to cut you out of deals. Maybe you can, and it's a, a lot of work. I mean, you need to, f the first deal is very, very difficult with new cutter parties. And then when they know each other, they want to cut you out. It's tough, man. Totally. Yeah. Can you give a bit of insight about the job as an operator? Are you working on computer on desk or actually doing physical stuff like products from? No, no, no. Uh, so you are, okay. So uh, the operator is basically on his desk uh, solving problems. I mean, the operator is handling the, okay, the, the, the physical side of the contract. So that means that the trader is going to say, oh, I'm going to buy, I don't know, whatever commodity from one place. And we need to ship it to that date, uh, to that place. And then the operator is going to do everything to make this deal happen, happening on the physical side. So he's going to uh, uh, I know, book the inspection company, book the transport uh, company, uh, make sure that uh, everything, uh, payment are made on time, that uh, the quality report inspection is made on time. Now also make sure about the pricing. It, it depends. But yeah, the operator is basically doing the fulfillment of the physical side of the, of the, um, of the, of the trade. So... Uh, yes, you are on your computer, but you are like on your phone and um, writing email and so on uh, all day long. But yeah, you are. You, this is why it's a tough job actually, because you are. You are. It's not like a software, you know. It's uh, it's people that you need to co coordinate together to make it work. And people, man, they are the worst. Huh? Yeah, I mean. But also, I, I'm very hard with all the brokers because. People think this is the best way to get in is to be a broker. And no, I think this is the worst way because it's very difficult. I think what you do, Joy, is very, very difficult. What is your opinion on Masaru like Unidia Cas? Is it just, yeah, it's just a line on the <laughs> It's a good, uh, it's a good summary. Yeah, it's just a line on the resume. But it's not bad, man. It's not bad, especially Unidia. As I said, if you can get, um, but because at Unidia, you need to work and then you only study on Saturday and Friday. So it's not that bad, man, actually. Cass is like uh, any normal master. Man. It's a line. What a... Oh, the big one, there's uh, Switzerland or Singapore's community of cut-ups, low tax, no, no, it's, it's, uh, no, it's, it's over, man, it's over. This is uh, the older, older world. Um, low tax, you can get it uh, everywhere. Neut neutrality, uh, Dubai is more neutral than, uh, than Swiss, than Switzerland. Uh, same with Singapore. Uh, regulation. Singapore, Switzerland, man, a lot of regulation. Um, I mean, lot, not compared to other countries, but it's, um, yeah, it used to be Arab, it's going to be less and less Arab, uh, and now Dubai is uh, uh, actually taking, um, is, uh, yeah, it's taking everything uh, uh, that uh, Europe had. Um, but it, it's going to still, it's, okay, it's still going to be Arab, uh, because there is large company that are not going to move, uh, but it's not as, um, as lively as uh, what Dubai is not right now in terms of commodity trading. Then um, Singapore, a lot of people move from Hong Kong to Singapore, so it really trend take the up, but the bank are a bit more lax than uh, Switzerland. Switzerland, the bank, it's horrible to work with them. 
if you're not a Fortune 500 company. Um, so, so yes, Singapore, it's a bit more easier than Switzerland right now, but, um, but, uh, still, yeah, no, I would say, I don't know enough Singapore, even though I'm in Asia, I, I still don't know, uh, uh, enough. I'm, I'm probably going to incorporate a company soon there. So I'll see. Yeah. So Cesar is a, a, actually, is actually a student of the Shipping Community Academy. Now, as he said, he worked in uh, Exxon, so, and he's an operator there. So you do everything, you execute, you schedule on the phone all the time. Yes, you are on the phone all the time. Yes, and the bigger company is more security, the more people involved, the more shit you get. <laughs> um, Dubai, the MCC cluster, the new, yeah, exactly what I said. But Cesar, um, I'm already from Cameroon. My family has a lot of land there. Do you think it's possible to do agriculture and then ship the product to Sitam? Man, Cameroon, a lot of things to do in Cameroon. The, the level of uh, corruption is so high there that um, if you can navigate it, uh, it it's a good uh, uh, it's a good tree. I've done a bunch of business uh, uh, in Cameroon. I have a very good friend from Cameroon, also uh, a community trader now. She worked in one of the big companies. So, no, no, there's a lot of stuff to do in Cameroon. But again, tough uh, country to navigate. And uh, funny thing about, not, not funny actually, but I worked for a, a company and I, I, I mean, I worked for a group and one of the company of the group had land in Cameroon and they had a big plan to do like a big cocoa plantation and so on. And basically what happened is like, they had this big uh, plan and each time they, they needed like a new license, you know. Oh, now you need to do to do the inspection for uh, the river, whatever. So they pay the Ministry of Water staff for the inspection. Then there's someone that comes and says, ah, oh, no, this is a Ministry of, uh, I don't know, bird and, and stuff like that. So you need, you need to pay for another inspection and make, making sure that the cocoa will not disturb the bird. And after like 10 ministry that comes and to get their money, they were like, okay, fuck that. We, we just leave Cameroon. Which documentation is needed? I mean, there's like, your question is so vague that I can't answer. Also planning to get your from banking license to help my client and save on taxes. Let me even wait on on more value. Yeah, okay. The problem man, is like um, I understand what you want to do, but the problem is that uh, the your client is going to send money to uh, this uh, Vanuatu Island uh, bank, okay? And then the bank of your client is going to say, Jude. What are you doing, man? What are you sending money to uh, Vanuatu Island for a deal in Africa? Man? It's not that easy. Have you seen people transition their career after working in the same engineering energy? Um, that, 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 this is a good question. Usually, when um, um, for the shipping committee operator certificate, I said that man, you need there's a for two types of people: young student. Uh, a new professional because you know the big companies that are going to be okay to train you if you are below like or, or 30 years old ish it's still okay but if you are a bit um, older than that uh, the big companies are not going to to want to train you and so on I, I've not, not it's going to be tough but it's always work actually in the in the smaller company that's for sure but the problem is that you need as an engineer um, you will have a lot, a lot of knowledge, but do you have the knowledge to... Because first, you need to know how to move the, the stuff from point A to point B. Do you know that or not? So, I don't know. Man. It seems, it seems a, a bit tough, man, honestly. How do we see the market share of African? Yeah, they are doing well, actually. More, more and more local uh, African uh, company are expanding. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, but Depan Africa is a huge continent. Some countries are doing better than others. Yeah, Depan who is your client, but you can get away. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm, I'm not really sure. Because uh, you know, Persian, you know, people in the industry. Uh, yes, that's, that's, uh, for, for, yeah, that, that's true. Okay, guys, I'm going to take a few more questions and then uh, I'm going to call it a, a, a night for me.
that's it okay so uh so we were like at the top of the stream i think we were like 35 or something like this so i think that's a that's a new a new um uh, a new record so cool this is cool thanks a lot uh all of you guys uh, for being here um and then i will try to do like a uh i had too 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 much work um uh, last week this week uh, so i couldn't uh I'll make a video for next week so it's a big shame but uh yeah too much to do i will do another one in two weeks but still guys please uh like the video uh subscribe to the channel I think for the inside, let's say I start again a big movie from it's uh 30 years. I found out that really not for me. Can I switch to another? Yes, sure, you can switch one, no problem, especially bank and some not the problem. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's but sure, especially man, if you want to tell them it's going to be easy to, to move to find another job, and uh, after especially after three years. Any percentage cap to be aware of a supplier with an unconfirmed CS, you mean the buyer as much or product spec. Yeah, so unconfirmed C is useless, first of all. It's completely useless. But the problem is like, let's say that uh, um, um, you open a, um, a LC. Then you make, you need to make sure that the LC wording is also okay because a lot of scammers, what they do is they open a LC, but with like a LC impossible to present document correctly for whatever reason. Um, we had something like uh, where they had, uh, one of the requirements was that, that the official uh, stamp had to be a triangle. And the official stamp on those health uh, documents was wrong. And actually, no official stamp is triangle. But just this, you know, it's it, it makes uh, the thing uh, impossible to uh, to confirm the LC. So that that's mean that there's going to be a discrepancy, and then that's mean that you are in the end of your buyers at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, no, sorry. Uh, okay, guys. So have a good day. Ciao, ciao. And, and like the video. Yeah.